Luke chapter 1, verse 57. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy, and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, no, he is to be called John. They said to her, there is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet. And to everyone's astonishment, he wrote his name is John. Immediately, his mouth was open and his tongue set free and he began to speak, praising God. All the neighbors were filled with awe and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, what then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Amen. For a few moments, I want to encourage you from the subject a divine disruption. Amen. A divine disruption. And for a thing, I want you to remember that no matter what life's circumstances may look like, by faith, we are to embrace God's promises, God's purpose and God's power. HMBC, as we get closer to celebrating the incarnation, we acknowledge that maintaining a stance of holiness and a posture of righteousness is no easy task. We understand even as we deck the halls with boughs of holly that ministry can be tough but it is rewarding at the same time. But even in the midst of the good times, ministry could put our mental and spiritual toughness to the test. We've all faced challenges as we push ourselves to serve. And as we continue this pilgrimage to Bethlehem, I want to encourage you not to focus on the circumstances of life. Nor do I want you to focus on the opinions and actions of others. Instead, in everything we say, in everything that we do, we must embrace God's truth. 
His truth, my brothers and my sisters, is undeniable. And we are to embrace, embrace the fact that his promises are 100% and we can take them to the bank. His purpose in our lives, being his gladness, always accompanied by his presence as we are connected to the power of God. And we have to understand that God's power is unmatched and unparalleled and it knows no limits. In the midst of the trials and the tribulations of ministry, it is important to remember that carrying this sacred responsibility to selflessly serve God and others was never designed by God to be easy. Remember, we would never grow in life if it was always easy. Because of this, we know that the commitment to living a life dedicated to the cause of Christ can stretch the very fiber of our being. Testing our mental and spiritual toughness day in and day out. Yet, in the midst of these challenges, right, I urge you not to lose sight of the bigger picture. Yeah. Instead of being consumed by circumstances or distracted by the opinions of other people, focus on the unshakable truth Man. that God's promises are always faithful. And they are always true. His purpose for our lives go hand in hand with his comforting presence and his strength. In him, we must understand that no matter what we're going through, and think about it, we're all going through something at this time. We may be going through something in our families. We may have issues on our jobs, but we take comfort in knowing that God is right there. As we boldly go forth in the spirit of excellence, remember my brothers and my sisters to stand firm on your faith. Knowing that God's purpose for you is accompanied by his unconditional love. Amen. You are accompanied by his grace and you are fueled by the power of Almighty God. We want to willingly embrace the challenges of our process. And for those who don't know, our process is what we're going through yeah. to lead us to our purpose. Yeah. But we have to remember that in the midst of the process, God is shaping us. God is equipping us. And he's molding us into the church that he would have for us to be. All we have to do is trust his plan. Rely on his strength and keep our eyes focused on the ultimate goal. Don't focus on the noise. Don't focus on the crowd. But we focus on the fact that we've been called to build up the kingdom of God. Even in this time of Christmas, 
as we reflect on the events surrounding the incarnation of Jesus Christ, we understand that even though we walk by faith and not by sight, even though we strive daily to carry the burden of ministry, there are going to be some situations beyond our control. And Deacon Woods, there are going to be some unforeseen obstacles. But the unforeseen obstacle by us, to us, have been strategically placed in our way. And it stimulates our growth as we navigate the obstacles. And no matter how righteous we are, brokenness and disconnection still manage to see into the depths of our lives. But in the midst of the struggle, it is crucial, Deacon Smith, to grasp the fact that, that the trustworthiness and faithful of God, faithfulness of God is always there. Do I got some folks that may be going through some things on today, but you're trusting and believing in what God promised you? And I want you to understand that every word that God has given you or spoken over you is driven by his grace. Even if what we're going through brings us discomfort. This, my brothers and my sisters, causes us to look at life and issues from a different perspective. See, when we realize that God has his hand on us, Thank you, Lord. when we realize that the obstacles are placed there for the good and for our good. When we realize that the hurt didn't take us out, but it built us up. And we know that every step of the way, no matter how tough things got, God was right there. We look at life with a different perspective. It is our mandate, no matter what we're going through, to align ourselves with his will and be plugged in to him as our power source. If we're not plugged into God, we cannot function like we're supposed to function. So what I've learned in my 49 years of living, and I think you can agree with me that heartache, struggles, disappointment, they don't discriminate. That's right. And I truly believe that we can all agree on this. And we also understand life ain't easy. And let me throw this in parenthetically, MIT ready. There's no easy way to the victory. We have to pay our dues. And the problem with folks on today is they want results. Without dues. Preachers want to preach the 500, but they won't preach the two. But there's no easy way to the victory. But when we look back over our lives and we think of all that God has done for us, we realize that no matter what life looks like, God has always been faithful and he has fulfilled every one of his promises that he made to us. Yes, 
Remember. Remember how he provided. Remember how he made a way out of no way. Ray, remember how he healed you. Remember how he delivered you. Remember how he protected you when you were doing things you weren't supposed to do. And remember how he guided us through dangers seen and unseen. However, no matter what we have faced in life, God has always been a reliable source. Yes, yes, amen. He's been a sure foundation, and He has been a God that has, that never ceases to provide. And even when we don't want to, he always orders our steps. The songwriter says, each step I take, my Savior goes before me. He's my shelter. He's my redeemer. And he's the one who sets me free. Each breath I take, he guides me as he grows me. He draws me nearer and I offer praise unto me. We thank God for a divine destruction. Our second pre-Christmatorial text is found in the third gospel. And I did make that word up. Uh, it's found in our third gospel. And Luke, as we know, is writing to the most excellent Theophilus. However, we understand that he has a larger audience. And it is made up of Gentile Christians. And he wants to ensure them that what they've been taught is true. In our passage for today, we explore this divine disruption by God. We have to understand something. As we move through this narrative, that the Bible is God's revelation of himself to us. The word presents God as a loving and sovereign ruler. Yes. Through the many works of God, we have witnessed ourselves. We know by our own testimony that God is a powerful creator. And he more than a sufficient maintainer. And he has shown his divine power through his creation on multiple occasions. Are y'all with me on today? He also has made himself knowable through his word. That's why a lot of folks don't know him. Because in his word. And you gotta read his word. Come on now. And study his word to know him. So you know this in parenthetically. Reading the word and studying the word are two different things. But God has revealed himself through his I heard two people say God has revealed himself through his and through his word. That's why Brother Arthur, we got to read and study and study to show ourselves approved. But through the holy scriptures God shows himself 
as sovereign. The key point I want you to look at in this incarnational process is that God is sovereign. He's loving and he's an all-sufficient Savior, but he's also revealed himself through spoken words of angels, prophets, apostles, and others. He's also made himself known through visions, signs and wonders, and miracles. And I want you to understand this, that every passage, somebody say every, Every passage of scripture gives us insight or knowledge into the person and the work of God. Luke's statement, for the hand of the Lord was surely upon him in a special way. Think it would, that's evidence that everything revolving around the story of John demonstrates God's presence and it demonstrates that God is in control. Let's consider the evidence. We see the evidence of God's power and his sovereignty in sending Gabriel and in Gabriel's announcement. We see evidence in God's power and sovereignty when Zacharias is made speechless for not believing God's work. We see evidence of God's power and sovereignty in Zacharias and Elizabeth's conceiving a child when they were past childbearing age. And we see the hand of God when Zacharias' speech and his hearing are restored when he named his son John. Happens in the evidence. My brothers and my sisters, the historian Luke was concerned with Theophilus and those who would read his work to be able to clearly observe and interpret the unfolding of the plan of redemption. He wanted his readers to understand that the plan of redemption was an act of God. Not something that happened by chance. Are y'all with me? <laughs> Joseph had nothing to do with it. Zachariah had nothing to do with it. It's all, this story is all about God. Understand as you read the text. You heard that the birth of John brought great joy and celebration. We must understand that the joy and celebration was because they had a baby. A baby boy. And he could carry on the family name by having some children. But we understand as we look back from 2023 that John never got married. And he never had any children. But the news of Elizabeth giving birth brought happiness to those around her because of her previous barrenness. Because of the couple's age and because of the child's title. He was the Messiah's forerunner. However, as believers, our joy should be even greater because we know the answer to the question in the passage. What 
this child will turn out to be. We already know. We know that he was a powerful preacher. John the Baptist Missionary Baptist Church in Wilderness, New York. People were running over to hear what he had to say. He was a great preacher and folks found him. We know that he will prepare the way of the Lord. Through his preaching, people confess their sins and were baptized, which showed their genuine repentance. We also know in the future, he will announce that Jesus was the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. So we know that John is no ordinary baby. He was chosen by God for a specific purpose to prepare the way for the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ. And throughout the New Testament, we see that John the Baptist played a pivotal role in God's plan of redemption. His message of repentance and baptism prepared the hearts of the people for the ministry of Jesus Christ. John's birth was, just, was not just a cause of celebration among his immediate family. But we also see a sign of God's faithfulness and the fulfillment of his promises. Because if God can be faithful then, he'll be faithful now. The angel Gabriel had foretold John's birth. And now it was being fulfilled before their very eyes. And as believers, in 2023, we can draw encouragement from the story of John's birth. Just as God was faithful to his promises and his plans regarding John, we can trust that he will also be faithful to his plans and his promises for us. Furthermore, John's life, it serves as a reminder. Deacon Belcher's of the importance of preparation and repentance. Preparation and repentance is important when it comes to our relationship with God. Amen. Just as God, this is John, called the people to examine their hearts. We must regularly confess our sins yes, yes. and seek forgiveness from our God. By doing this, my brothers and my sisters, we prepare our hearts to receive God's grace and experience a deeper relationship with Him. The birth of John the Baptist, my brothers and my sisters, was a divine disruption, a miraculous event, and it marked the beginning of a new chapter in God's plan of redemption. It was a sign of God's faithfulness and it's a call to repentance. With all that said, what does the truth, what truth does the birth of John reveal about our God? Number one, the promise of God is always true. The purpose of God is gracious. And the power of God 
is wondrous. My brothers and my sisters, isn't it good to know that we serve a God that has the ability to overcome any challenge and to conquer any foe? Isn't it good to know that we serve a God that can remove any obstacles that is placed in his way? Isn't it good to know that we serve a God that has the advantage even when the outlook seems grim? I want you to understand that no matter what life looks like, God is the master creator. And that's why our faith is in God. His creativity cannot be captured. That's why our faith is in God. His strength cannot be measured by any man. That's why our faith is in God. His love is uncontainable. That's why our faith is in God. His joy is unspeakable. That's why our faith is in God. His wisdom is limitless. He knows his mercy knows no end. His grace is priceless. That's why our faith is in God. Understand on today, his glory never dies. His faithfulness is eternal. His peace surpasses all understanding. His forgiveness knows no bound. That's why our faith is in God. The songwriter said, my soul is at peace. As onward I trust, because I can rely on the promises, the promises of Almighty God. He gave me his word and he sets me free. God's wonderful grace is sufficient for you and is sufficient for me. My brothers and my sisters, we've been misunderstood, but God's grace is sufficient. We've been counted out. God's grace is sufficient. Sister Rose Marie, you were sick, but God's grace is sufficient. We've been deserved, but God's grace is sufficient. We've been cast aside, but God's grace is sufficient. I want you to know, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you're going through, God's grace is still sufficient. And in burden is right. And should we see, we've been underestimated, we've been overlooked, we've been neglected, and we've been broken. But God's grace is sufficient. We've been rejected. Some of us are dealing with hardship. But God's grace is sufficient. We found adversity. We've experienced pain. But through it all, we found strength. Through it all, we persevered. Through it all, we broke in grace. Through it all, we've been healed. I've been seeking the truth about God since my early days. I've been lost. And I was wondering, unsure of my way. But in my search, oh, you showed me the way through. In Him, I found a path that stepped back and true. We may have struggled, but Eve found the path that stepped back and true. None of us are perfect, but we found the path that's steadfast and true. Somebody's heart 
may be broken on today, but these sound faith the steadfast and true. We've been mistreated, we've been abandoned, we've been misunderstood, but these are the pathway the steadfast and true. I may cry sometimes, we may not make it through a foreign life. Joy comes in the morning. We found a pathway to stand back and true. The song that it says, there is a name. I love to hear. I love to sing and work. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. When God disrupts our lives. In times of trouble, we become resilient. When God disrupts our lives, setbacks become comebacks. When God disrupts our lives, challenges turn into growth. When God disrupts our lives, struggles produce inner peace to every hardship. When God disrupts, his people begin to rise in every storm. We rise in the battle. We rise in rejection. We rise in disappointment. We rise in despair. We rise to the tears. We rise in loneliness. We rise in are you ready? Are you ready for the fire? Is something in your life? Are you ready for the fire destruction in your family, in your home, on your job? Are you ready? I don't know about you, but I'm ready. I'm ready to rise up. Are you ready to rise up? Hey, do this thing. Let me tell you something. See, when God steps in, ain't nothing nobody can do about it. To what truth does the birth of John reveal about our God? No matter what our circumstances may be, his promises are always true. See, Mother Williams, he may not come when you want him to come. But he's always on time. So if God promised it, Deacon Woods, you can take it to the bank. Number two, God's purpose is gracious. July, it ain't always going to feel good. But you're on this road for a reason. You may not understand the hurt. You may not understand the frustration. But God is working it out for your good. And you'll find yourself better when you stick with God, the brother we made. So we understand God's promises are always true. God's purpose is gracious. And last but not least, his power is wondrous. There's a song. He said that there's power in the blood 
of the Lamb. It has the power to bring you out. It has the power to take you back home. It has the power to answer your prayers. It has the power to heal your body. It has the power to do exceedingly, abundantly, of all that we can ask or think. So, friend, when God disrupts, submit. When God disrupts, submit. And we submit because his promise is the truth. His purpose is gracious. And his power is well. The songwriter says, I'm standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of God, we shall prevail. Because HMBC is standing on the promises of God. We're going to stand on the promises of God in the midst of the world, in the midst of our life. In the midst of a broken heart, in the midst of sickness, in the midst of money being funny, in the midst of it all, we're standing on the promises to the road for me that cannot fail. Are you standing? Are you standing? Stand on the promises of God. Because you're going to stand.